Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now June 12th of 2021. Now, one major aspect of the Star Wars franchise that a lot of fans have been very worried about is of course, whether or not John and Dave are gonna be able to pull things off correctly when it comes to dragging the Star Wars Legends content back into the Disney universe or the Disney canon, if you will. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Also, make sure to check in me out on Mike Zero One on Twitter if you guys would like to. Now, on top of all of this, we do know that John and Dave are working day in and day out with shows like The Mandalorian, the Ahsoka Tano series. You know, the Book of Boba Fett is already you know getting closer to post production. There's a lot of work being poured into that show that's gonna be unveiled by this December, so looking forward to that as well. The thing about Disney Star Wars right now and where it stands, it's currently in a really interesting phase because in 2021 this year, we got the Book of Boba Fett and the Bad Batch. You know, This December is gonna be a big month because the Bad Batch, of course, is going to reflect on other TV shows that are going to be announced in that November to December timeframe. So everything related to John and Dave and what they're trying to do for Star Wars, it really does speak volumes. It tells us that they do care about the fans. Now, when we look back to February when Gina Carano was fired from Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy in such a poor way and in such an unprofessional way, I must add as well, we can see how a lot of fans were up in arms over that and walked away from Disney Plus, you know, canceled their subscriptions. A lot of fans were just fed up and over with it, and they just walked away. Those are the type of fans that John and Dave want to attract back. You know, those fans and also the ones that walked away after The Rise of Skywalker dropped in theaters back in December of 2019. So with that being said, of course, what's really intriguing about all of this is that given that now both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are beginning to actually move from the Book of Boba Fett and focusing more on the Ahsoka series as well as the Mandalorian season three and four, it's described that Kathleen Kennedy is still having many issues with the Acolyte series for Disney Plus with Leslie Headland. However, in a recent interview with Gina Carano, she was eventually questioned about Lucasfilm's leadership, such as Kathleen Kennedy, to where Gina was able to state that it was always a very complex time on the set of season one, where many times as Kathleen Kennedy and many of those closest to her on the set wanted to purposely keep my character at a minimum. I was initially told by Kennedy that she wanted a strong female character that would have tons of screen time, so I was eventually very confused about all of that. Further, Gina states that it was also Kennedy's call to delete many of my scenes from season one of Mando, and that Jon Favreau tried his absolute best to get them put into season two, but Kathleen Kennedy just wouldn't allow it, which was frustrating for sure, and really got me upset since I poured so much of my time and effort into training for those particular scenes. Now, Gina also reveals that my time as Cara Dune in season one was absolutely not as much fun as it was in season two, as it just felt more like every move that I was making as the character was being criticized. Both Kennedy and John would often fall into creative differences about how the character should look and how she should act in the series. Of course, I had no issues with John, but Kennedy wanted me to become a tougher woman than I was in season one, which didn't make much sense to me as I was truly giving it my all and trying to also be realistic in the moment. I still enjoyed my time for season one, it just felt like it was governed more, and I wish I could have seen my old scenes in the show for the first season. Now, this speaks a lot about Kathleen Kennedy. Let's backtrack here, all right? If we go all the way back to early 2020, when Kathleen Kennedy was talking about why she did not want deleted scenes of episode nine on the Blu-ray. Of course, this was a lie, but she, in her mind, believes that it should be pretty much remaining a mystery. This way, it doesn't kind of soil what you see in the final cut. Here's the thing, the truth about all of that is that she intentionally did, yes, delete those scenes and intentionally proposed to Disney the idea of not including deleted scenes on the Blu-ray to kind of hide that contrast of what was better and what was not. And obviously if we saw those deleted scenes, a lot of fans would have been like, you know, snapping their fingers and saying to themselves, what in the world happened here? 
you know, we saw that obviously a lot of work was being done for the Rise of Skywalker. Even Ian McDermott said himself that uh, there was so much Palpatine material, so many scenes that were actually left over that could have really made its own movie. I mean, that does tell us a lot. And it also fits directly in with how Daisy Ridley said that Kathleen Kennedy did so many different endings of the film back and forth. Now, moving ahead here, we have a similar scenario with Gina Carano, where she refused to use any of her deleted scenes from season one into season two of the show. To me, that says a lot. To me, that says that Kathleen Kennedy just does not care about the overall fandom. She does not care about some of the actresses on board or the actors at that. And she's one to speak, right? Kathleen Kennedy always wants a strong female character. She got one. She got Gina Carano as Cara Dune. What more could you do, right? She wanted her to go way overboard than what she was opposed to. That would have been unrealistic. Thankfully, that was leveled out and balanced. But the thing about Kathleen Kennedy here is that I believe that this is why there are so many issues on the set or behind the scenes for the Acolyte TV show. There's been a lot of firings, there's been a lot of setbacks because of creative differences between some of the directors of different episodes and other co-writers associated with Leslie Headland. I mean, so on and so forth. There is a lot of problems happening with The Acolyte. I still to this day don't believe it's going to make it for 22. It's most likely going to be 23. And I also stand by my opinion that yes, this is going to be released still. It's still going to be a thing, unfortunately. It will release, but I don't believe it's going to release next year. I just don't see that. Now, let's be real about the situation. Gina Carano really got what she wanted to do in season two, which is great. You know, I think that we can all clap to that. That was all because of Jon Favreau having a lot of creative power over the series in comparison to season one, where Kathleen Kennedy had the power over that. So, when we look at Jon and Dave and what they're trying to really fuse with all these different TV shows, they're trying to make this universe that's going to really branch itself off into other TV shows. It seems like that what Lucasfilm is trying to do, they're trying to really experiment with one-off TV shows and see how they perform, and then if they want to do a season two, they can do a season two. As far as we know so far, the Kenobi series is only a limited series. The Book of Boba Fett, thankfully, however, is going to be a multi-season show. We have seen some merchandise on the set that actually says The Book of Boba Fett Season 1. So that's a major indicator that more is to come. So, like I've said before in the past, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know what you, let me know what you think about the entire scenario below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.